Today, we're heading through the city of Leicester. I don't particularly like cities, and Leicester has an eensy-weensy bit of a reputation. There's also been quite a lot of civil unrest in the city this week between Hindus and Muslims, and we have to get through Lock, Kiln, Lime Kiln Lock before four o'clock, because then they shut it for the Diwali celebrations. So, um, I think we'd better crack on. The mooring, a couple of miles south of the city, was pleasant enough. This is just close to G's Lock. Will there be less to worry about in Leicester? Are there safe moorings? We see a different kind of greenery and what association does Leicester have with the South Pole? Still all quiet as we approach Blue Bank Bridge and Blue Bank Lock. Hello. <laughs> we were talking to oh, no, no. Ben. Um, yeah, at North Kilby Wharf. We were chatting to Ben, a very nice guy who works for the CR CRT, and he's also been a boater for like 27 years. He knows this stretch of canal right at the back of his hand. He was actually uh, saying that the reputation that Leicester has is really quite unjustified and um, he kind of told us all the good points about Leicester and suggested we kind of stop and have a look. Uh, apparently the food markets are fantastic. Um, what else did he say? Um, nice jewellery forms. Oh, nice nice jewellery shops. Yeah, nice jewellery shops and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, yeah, that said, um, we're still not going to stop. Uh, I have this aversion to cities. I hate, I hate noise. Uh, it's because I've got ADHD and the, the, the noise of like things like lawn mowers and constant traffic just stresses me out. So, so yeah, uh, we're just going to head straight through. Sorry about that, Ben. Um, but yeah, never mind. But thank you for the info, Ben. Thank you for the info indeed. The CRT vegetation crew exit King's Lock and we can share the lock down with the boat moored in front. Adjoining King's Lock is a very charming little guest house and tea rooms. Nice use for an old lock keeper's cottage. Approaching St Mary's Mill Lock and the significant amount of graffiti means that we're in the outskirts of Leicester. And just look at the duckweed! The John Bull Rubber Company, which was later Dunlop, was situated here. A few hundred yards past the lock and we come to... Leicester City Football Ground? Quite frankly, I'm a Southampton fan, so... Uh... I hope they get relegated. <laughs> hmm, how prophetic were these words? At the time of editing, it looks like Southampton and possibly Leicester will get relegated. Whoops, take it easy, Val. Thankfully, she was okay. I hope you didn't get that. Good morning.
Now many of you are probably aware that I don't actually like putting adverts in the middle of my videos. Yeah, I could make a little bit more money doing that, but anyway, I don't like doing it. It, uh, it kind of interrupts the flow of the video, I think. But um, today is a bit of an exception, so just bear with me a minute. Some of you may already know that we've recently opened our own website, swansnetproductions.com where we showcase our creativity into one special place. For me, I'm really excited about this. It means that I can sell my photography work, um, prints, canvas prints and greetings cards, which have been expertly printed by Print Graphics Northwich. And you'll be able to buy any of these prints or greetings cards through my Etsy shop, which you'll be able to access through the website. I also have an Etsy shop called the One-Off Poncho Shop. I'm creating one-of-a-kind, handmade, bespoke ponchos and tunics. Andrew is nicely modelling one for me now. <laughs> um, it's beautiful, I love it. It's great. And these are made from pre-loved fabrics. You can buy them through the Etsy shop or directly from our website on the one-off poncho shop page. And also from the website you'll be able to access both our YouTube channels. That's Tales from the Swan's Neck and Val Hudson, Simple Living, Simple Music. And last but not least, there's our writing page, which covers articles and posts we've both written on our thoughts and reflections about narrowboat life, simple living, and a positive mindset. Great, okay, back to the video, folks. So we are now on the River Saw, or the Saw Navigation, to give it its correct title. Uh, I was once told by Richard Chamberlain, who runs the fuel boat on the Shroppy and the Thangotton, that if a pigeon pisses in Leicester, then the river saw goes into flood. Let's hope all the pigeons have got their legs crossed. It's been a really dry year so far, so little chance of flooding at the moment. Leicester Rowing Club, just through the bridge. We're on the Mile Straight now, which takes us into the city centre. And the architecture is beginning to improve noticeably. De Montford University on the right. Now Leicester is one of the most culturally and ethnically diverse cities in the UK. Narborough Road, which is about a quarter of a mile from here, is said to have residents from about 23 different countries. There are about 70 languages spoken in the city. Leicester is bustling with events all year round, many located in the cultural quarter to the east of the city centre. There are two safe gated moorings in the city centre. The first is on the right. For access you'll need your British Waterways key. And it's right next to West Bridge which is the closest bridge to the city centre which is about 200 yards away. And I hope they're enjoying their spliff. Yeah. 
new apartments at Merlin Wharf, and the art cottage at Friars Mill, and the second of the gated moorings. Another huge weir on the left, where the canal and the river saw surround Frog Island. I guess the high fence is to keep the frogs in. Frog Island was important to the Leicester textile industry. The mills produced clothing looms and spinning machinery, and there were also mills for dyeing the cloth. The area to the right is a work in progress, Leicester Waterside Regeneration Area. Leicester is a city renowned for its street art and in fact boasts the tallest piece of street art in Europe at 82 metres on St George's Tower in the city centre. Every couple of years Leicester has a street art festival where the world's most renowned street artists gather in the city to spray paint murals. Now, street murals can actually strengthen a sense of place and give a place some identity and strengthen the community spirit. But what a shame that some loathsome toads feel they have to deface these fabulous murals with their clay-brained tags. At North Lock, we're waiting for a boat coming up. Val sets off to be helpful, while I stand around chatting to the neighbour in the holiday boat. Once through the lock, we pass Leicester Riders Basketball Arena with more well-crafted murals by graph work. Now there's a huge mooring pontoon down the arm on the wonderfully named Memory Lane Wharf with nothing but a CRT barge on it. We've made it to Lime Kiln Lock with an hour and a half to spare before it closes for the Diwali Festival, the Festival of Lights. The duckweed and litter is quite unbelievable. The famous textile and knitwear company Woolsley were based in Leicester. And the Leicester connection with the South Pole? Woolsley manufactured the underwear for the teams racing to the South Pole in 1911. Yep, yeah, Captain Scott and Amundsen wore pants made in Leicester. Now, the duckweed I'm okay with, but I cannot for the life of me understand why people have so little respect for their surroundings that they leave their litter everywhere. There are rubbish bins on the towpath, but I suppose carry an empty plastic bottle a hundred yards is just too much for some people. God, it gets on my pip. Now surprisingly, the National Space Centre is located just around the corner on this waterway. I didn't even know we had one. After nine and a half miles and nine locks, we're looking for a mooring. It took us about six and a half hours, including a half hour for our lunch break. As you can see, we're on the River Saw, which means we made it through Leicester in one piece. Thoughts on Leicester? It's a pleasant enough city. Um, I think the, the outskirts are very attractive. Um, just outside the city centre is very run down and uh, there's a lot of graffiti. But the city itself is um, its not unpleasant, it's pretty much like any other city really. Um, I was pleased to get through it. Uh, we've come, come onto the River Saw and uh, I suppose my one gripe is that the lock landings are so small. 
um, we came out of one lock yesterday. Had there been t had there been two decent side boats coming out and two coming in, there just wouldn't have been space. There was just one space on the lock landing for about a 35 foot boat. That was all. So aside from that, the actual experience on the river has been very very good. Well, I've been sorely disappointed <laughs> by the river. Uh, excuse the pun. To be honest, I mean it's um, I, I mean parts of it are very very beautiful parts of it aren't um, and I mean the thing that's that's kind of ruined the experience of the river for me is the constant traffic noise there are so many huge roads around here that um, you just can't get away from the traffic noise which is a bit sad um, because as Val rightly says um, you know in places it's it's gorgeous the approach uh, or the approaches into Leicester are, are just really really beautiful aren't they um, and yeah, I, I, to be honest, I really don't think Leicester deserves the kind of reputation it has. It seemed perfectly safe and reasonable to me. Um, so uh, yeah, it was it was all right. It was it was better than I expected, actually. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Done. Um, yeah, okay.